Good afternoon, Mary. Thanks for having me. Uh, over the next eight minutes, I'm going to walk you through what I think should be the reason why we should pursue this and how should we do it. If I can move into my presentation. All right, these are my disclosures. Define the problem. We're going to concentrate pretty much in critical ischemia, which, as you guys will know, is Rutherford for four, five, and six. Uh, these are the definitions of it, so we're talking about the same patient. Uh, typically, we present a case, 63-year-old gentleman who presents with critical ischemia. The typical risk factors have been seen by podiatry uh, before as an outpatient. This is what we got in terms of non-invasive testing. Uh, you can see that the right leg is a problem, particularly below the ankle. So the question is, how do I take this patient from here uh, to a better place and what that place would be. Obviously, it's relevant because all patients with peripheral vascular disease, uh, the number is significant. These uh, statistics might have been shown before. The prevalence is quite high. In the U.S. alone, it's about 200 million people, uh, and um, it's a real problem. In terms of critical ischemia, we can see how 10% of those patients that have PAD will then go on and suffer from uh, critical ischemia, and those that have only claudication, about 5 to 10, will then uh, go into this type of patients. It's very expensive, so it's prevalent and it's expensive, and typically that would get our attention. When you look at the Medicare data, it's about $4 billion on a yearly base. Contrast that with other, including heart failure and or stroke, and you see that the numbers are staggering. The first thing that I will bring your attention is the fact that over the last few years, there has been a massive explosion in both uh, endovascular therapy, both in the way of diagnostic and interventions, and this graphic from JAMA shows that. Having said that, the number of bypass remains flat, and despite of that, and or uh, better approach and techniques, as has been shown by other operators, the real problem is that we continue to see a, a tremendous variability in the amount of patients with critical ischemia, the patterns of vascularization across our country. Furthermore, as we go forward and we invest so much money and so much effort into doing or trying to figure out an algorithm to treat all these patients, CMS is catching up to it. And the real question here is value. And value, the best way I would think about it is outcome over cost. And anything that we do should be done or based on this approach. So that's the why, is because it's prevalent, because it's expensive, and because it's needed, and it's going to be looked upon and what is the best way to do it. Now, how do we do it? I think that I'm going to make a few points, and I'm going to walk you through what I did to my patient. The first thing is that you need to know what you're doing, and that is basically anatomy. Go back to your early years. We concentrated on doing SFAs, TVLs, and often when it comes below the ankle, people sort of stop, and there is a DP, maybe a, a PT, maybe a medial and a lateral uh, branch. But if you're going to really become the person in CLI, you actually have to go deeper and try to understand uh, the different connections in the plantar arch and door the digital uh, arteries. And that is going to become particularly important as you endorse on complex interventions. You have been exposed uh, throughout this uh, course to the angiosome concept, and I think it's relevant particularly when you're talking about the plantar arch, and particularly when you're looking at a patient with a specific tissue loss. So I'm not going to go through all the different branches, but suffice to say that there are multiple connections between the AT and the PT uh, when you look at this. And knowing which channel to use, which one is open, which one is not, which one is an anatomic variant or not, is important. Uh, the same thing when it goes to the PT. Notice how I always show you a lateral view and an AP view, because that's how you should be looking at these films. Not only one view, but both views. And uh, I'm highlighting here the relationship between all these different branches and the angiosome concept, which is, again, of paramount importance, and I show it again there. Peroneal is equally important, and even though it's not particularly relevant at times for the plantar arch, it does feed uh, significant collaterals that at some point may become relevant. So what's the basics of this? First, you've got to get good imaging. And good imaging relies upon you being able to do a good lateral view. And this is the lateral view that you must do in this patient's foot needs to be lateral. X-ray should be perpendicular to what you're trying to do. And again, we use uh, criteria for correction. This tends to be the basis of what we do, which is the base of the fifth metatarsal. When you highlight this, is that you're really doing a lateral view. If you don't show that adequately, is it not a real, true lateral view? Uh, and this is the picture that you should be able to get. Obviously, this is a normal uh, foot, but in the disease foot, is going to highlight where and what you should be doing. 
The AP is equally important. The food should be up. X-ray, uh, the way it's displayed in the uh, slide, and then the correction factor here is going to be the uh, first metatarsal space. You have to be able to lay it out, otherwise you're not looking at what you should be looking, and if you're not looking at the right things, you're not gonna be able to open it up. And this is what you should be able to look at. And again, it becomes relevant in a second when I show you my case. Um, obviously, you have to have a, a framework to start this, and that comes general aspects. You're going to need to decide what are you going to use, the length of the wires, balloons, or what have you, the profile of them, the flexibility nature of them. There are different kind of wires. We've talked about this. Obviously, you got to become familiar with the specific group. There are millions of them, uh, but you got to learn which one you trust, which ones you don't, and that's how you develop your armamentarium. Support catheter is pretty much the similar. You got to uh, group them in your mind based on flexibility profile and whether they are hydrophilic or not. I would highly encourage you to use coronary catheters that we use for CTO, the reason being the diameter, the flexibility, and the ability to cross through difficult spots. The wires, tons of them, you know them as well as I do. You gotta pick and choose depending on what the challenges are. In terms of angioplasty, whether you are contralateral or ipsilateral, I prefer ipsilateral for this type of cases, and these are the considerations that you wanna do. And then techniques, there are multiple techniques, but when it comes to the plantar arch, intraluminal is the way to go. Anything short than that, don't do it because you're gonna make the situation worse. Is that what you're aiming for? This is a case that I did with a good friend of uh, Mary and I in Italy. Uh, and I'm gonna highlight quickly the anatomy, the SFA you'll see it above the knee, below the knee vessels, and this is what we did. You can see uh, that the SFA has a significant disease, more or less here. Obviously, that's not the reason why the patient presented like this. This is the pop. You see here the AT, the peroneal is there, and the PT is missing. Or target, like in the case that I presented, was the PT. Good lateral, you see highlighted the base of the fifth metatarsal, and a good AP, you see the space. Clearly, I need to open the PT and the plantar arch. Without that, I'm not gonna be able to offer this patient what I need. So here we go. We go with a support catheter and a wire, and in typical uh, peripheral practice, we push, we push until we hopefully get somewhere. We push here, but unfortunately, we didn't get where we wanted to go. Uh, Mary has an Iranian expression for this. You're type trying of to situation. make us all look bad, man. This is not fair. You know, it's like you know, and my then, people are here. They're like, it takes I you push. three hours to do this, and this guy did it in ten seconds. <laughs> So now, here is the, the money shot. I have shown you how AP and lateral are very important. Here I'm using the AP, and I'm using the, the metatarsal space as a point of reference. I'm going to access this. This is a stream access. It's important, but it helps you and it highlights the importance of good imaging and good concepts. I go here. We access. We go uh, and start looking and navigating the plantar arch, and you can see how important it is. Then we go here retrograde, and you can see how we are able to open the PT in a nice fashion. What I do afterwards is just I exteriorize the wire. I change my approach to the uh, anterior approach. I don't like to do anything from the retrograde approach in this location. I think it's problematic. I confirm my position. I didn't like the guy wire that was here, and I wanted to achieve hemostasis. I put another guy wire balloon and angioplasty as we will always do in this location. There's no specific devices other than that for the below the arch. And you can see great result in the PT and a beautiful plantar arch done in a retrograde fashion, understanding the anatomy, where to puncture and how to puncture. Is this relevant? I think so, because this is the next frontier. Stopping at the ankle is no longer an option. Mary, thank you for yeah, the invitation. Thank you very much. Can you stay, Carlos? I'm going to discuss